Hello, I'm in London, but none of this video is set here. I want to talk to you about a book that has changed my life. So I've been putting off making this video for about three or four months and it's kind of what the book is about. I'll put it on the side of the screen here. Hey. It's called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. So I've been putting it off because I thought this video might involve me talking a lot and I could talk about this book all day long. So I thought I'd make this video maybe a bit more lively. It is, this is the actual book, it's not a graphic. It is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Oh my goodness, I know this is going to be a very long video, so let's just embrace that. I think this is at the top of my list because this has had the biggest impact on me getting stuff out of my head and out into the world. It's a very gentle book. It's 12 chapters and it's a very easy read. And each chapter, I'm just trying to find one, each chapter is a week. And that's significant. So it's effectively a 12 week course. How can I put this? I'm from the UK. So maybe one way to describe it is Californian, uh, where it's about just accepting that you have thoughts and feelings and things that you might be completely unaware of that are blocking you from being creative. So the idea of the book is you do these exercises, they're very, easy, I found them good fun. But there are these writing exercises and you just complete one chapter every week. That's all you've got to do. I like this so much while I was reading it that I found myself skipping ahead, which got a bit tricky because I was supposed to be doing the exercises on one week, but I'm sort of reading ahead just because I enjoyed the, the reading, enjoyed the prose. There are two big ideas in this book which are introduced in week one or chapter one. And these two big ideas are morning pages and the artist date. The morning pages are something else. And I'm gonna show you what they are by actually showing you my morning pages, which you're not supposed to do. So the idea of morning pages is this. When you wake up in the morning before you do anything, before you check your email or scroll through Facebook, the first thing you should do in the morning is to sit down with a pad and fill three pages. It takes about half an hour. I think she's writing in the US legal pad size because I started mine in A5, in this really nice A5 book. And I think that's a bit, bit small, so I took it to about five pages or half an hour, whichever comes first. And the idea of morning pages is that you basically free write what's in your head, literally word for word, what's coming up in your brain. So that could be, I don't know what to write. I don't wanna do this. I don't like my pen. I'm too hot. Thingy looked at me funny yesterday. What's that about? I haven't paid the gas bill. I haven't changed gas suppliers. All of that junk, just get it out of your head. The, only objective of the morning pages is to keep the pen moving. I've got pencil. Keep the pen moving for half an hour. And I found some techniques over time that when I started daydreaming or going off on one in my head, if you just write the word thinking in brackets and then try and get the pen moving again, that helped for me. But all you've got to do is fill three pages. Obviously she explains it way more better than I am. But I wanted to show you my morning pages because the, the other thing with morning pages is you are not supposed to show them to anyone. They are not for anyone else. The sole objective is to just get you to keep the pen moving and dump out what's in your head continuously for 30 minutes. What I found was that stuff started coming out that I just wasn't expecting. Things that you're supposed to do today emerge and you might launch into writing out an email, bits of your to-do list. But the other fantastic thing for me was that ideas that have been bubbling up in your head have a place to go. You can just get them out of your head. They're not supposed to be good. Some people call it journaling and I really don't think that's a good idea to call it journaling because that gives the impression that you're writing a diary. And it might be that you write about stuff that happened to you yesterday or things that you might do tomorrow, but it's not journaling. It's, it's got to be junk. You've got to write rubbish. It's whatever comes up in your head. Don't make it good. Don't give it a structure. Just uh, sometimes broken half sentences come out. 
that's the case, as long as you keep the pen moving. Now I'm sort of <laughs> worried about holding this up, I've vetted this. Oh, look at the date, it's the 27th of, oh, I see, cover it up. It's the 27th of August, so I've been holding on to this to share with you for, oh my goodness, six weeks now. But as you can see, it's really messy. So I started off with a really nice 1.0 millimeter gel impact Signo pen. And I had a really nice Paper Chase A5 Eco spiral bound notebook. And that was great because the ink soaked up into the page really nice. It just felt really nice to so treat yourself to some nice stationery. But over time, I found that the more workmanlike I was about it, because I'm just literally draining pens onto a page. It's not writing, it's free writing. So it's it's junk, it's gotta come out as quickly as possible. Just keep that pen moving. And what I found, some ideas kept popping up. Sometimes I would get ideas for executing those ideas. These pages tap into things that you don't realize that you're thinking about, but these things are in your brain. And there is such a release into just getting out on the page and then getting rid of it. I, I read through it and I tear it up and I throw it away. I started writing in volume. I'd been doing this for about five years before I read the book. I'd heard about the morning pages. Because I hadn't read the book, I thought, well, I'll, I'll type them because it would start me typing every morning. So I tried to type a side of A4 every morning. It turns out the problem with that is that subconsciously, I think I'm holding stuff back. Because you're typing, maybe there's a formality to it. Maybe because you know it's being electronically stored and hoarded, the pages were different. As soon as I started handwriting them, all this stuff started coming out that I wasn't expecting. And you don't actually have to sit down and, and write good stuff. All it is is just dumping out what's in your brain. If I said that enough times, it's dumping out what's in your brain. So then I had a new problem. And my new problem was I had all this stuff that I didn't really want to keep because it can be quite whiny and petulant. Well, maybe it's just my pages, but my pages were quite whiny and petulant. And the book is very clear to say, that's okay, that's what they're for. Just dump out what's in your head. So then I had this, this new problem, which is I had stuff in here, which I really liked and which made me happy, like sentences or ideas or fully formed articles or emails that just vomited out. I didn't have anywhere to put them and I didn't want to hoard all my writing. I just wanted to keep the bits that made me happy. So what I started to do is to box out, I don't know if you can see this, box it out, the bit that you like. That's actually a quote. <laughs> it's a quote from the Kransky sisters. Set it free, if it comes back, it will only bore. If you want something, set it free. <laughs> if it comes back, it bores. So just set it free. But ironically, that is what this, this part of the explanation is about. So I've got my bio, I'm now writing biro, because you can always find a biro from a Express supermarket if you're out and about and you don't have a pen. So I box out the bit that I want and then I mark from right to left the bits that I've read. So a new task emerged. I was actually reading what I was writing in volume. So now I'm writing in volume. Now I'm reading my own stuff in volume. And then I get the bit that I want and I, put that somewhere. Now, before I started Morning Pages, I had about seven documents where I would keep material. So that's good in terms of volume, but I honestly didn't know where to start when I would start writing each day. Is it, you know, which of the seven documents do I open? Do I create a new one? Or do I maintain these other seven that I wasn't reading either. I was just putting stuff into these documents and they weren't really going anywhere. So it felt really good to solve this problem of volume by creating one document. So now I have one Word document called 2019. You might be watching this in years to come. So you could call it 2020. Only recently, I've now moved that document into the cloud so I can update it from anywhere. So I've, I've got that on Google Docs. Just one document and I just add to the bottom. So this document is full of bits that make me happy and ideas and things that I want to keep. They're, they're, they're back here. So it's 2019 and it's one single document of all my stuff. I can sit down in that armchair with a cup of coffee and just go through ideas that I've already written and I make them better or I share them. 
but they've got one place to go. And it feels fantastic to not be hoarding whiny petulance that needs editing. So basically edit it as you go. So once I've typed up the bit that I want to keep in my 2019 documents, I then put a line through it that way, tear it out, and I throw it away. Ooh. I've typed up the bits I want to keep. The rest, thank you for your service. Throw it away. It is such a great little system for me. Every morning, before I do anything, I sit down with my notebook. Th these are today's, I don't want to sh show them to you. But I turn to the next clean page, write the day at the top, maybe the time. I set my timer on my phone for 30 minutes and I just start writing whatever is in my head for 30 minutes. Sometimes I keep going, sometimes it's really hard and I stop and it's a bit juddery. So then the half hour is spent just trying to get the pen moving again. I've been doing this handwritten for three years. I, I don't really want to count the six years before that of typing. And it has just helped me enormously. It, it's just like this tsunami of material just comes out. And I know the, the other benefit of it is that I can not worry about it. If I get an idea, or something pops into my brain that I don't want to forget, I just bang it into the notebook on the next line. I know it's gonna be backed up. And also I know that once every six weeks, I'll have a nice time sat down with a coffee, going through things that I've thought of. It's just such a great system. The artist way doesn't propose doing it that way. All she's trying to get you to do is to write for half an hour every morning before you do anything else. But I found that that then opened up this portal of stuff that gave me the new problem of having somewhere to store it and a system to go through those ideas and do something with them. But even the idea for that came from the morning pages. Oh, I wish I could get sponsorship from Paper Chase. I've done 46 of these books, which I think is about 1.5 million words. And if I had to sit down and write 1.5 million words over three years, I think I'd feel slightly overwhelmed. But morning pages, we just keep the pen moving for half an hour. It, it, for me, it's it's a treat. It's my bit of the day. If you can find half an hour to do your pages, things will start happening. Uh, so I'll just leave that with you because it might be something you want to try. The second idea that Julia Cameron proposes in The Artist Way is the idea of an artist date. I think I found that to be the biggest, hardest thing in the book. She very gently floats the idea that once a week you take yourself somewhere, you go do something nice, something that's pointless, something that makes you happy. Her, her only stipulation is that you do it by yourself and you just mark out that time for you. And it, it needn't be a whole day, it could be a 10 minute trip somewhere. I didn't do it for the first few weeks and then I did start doing it and it's it's fantastic, it's a really nice thing to do for yourself. So it does kickstart a process where you start exploring things, things that you probably assume that you're too busy to do or too important or that the thing that you're doing is too silly. This book will try to get you to do that. Again, she explains it way more better than, than I can. Those are the only two things, Morning Pages and Artist Date, that you will do every week if you go along with the 12 weeks and the 12 chapters. And the rest of it, as she says, little writing exercises, they are really easy to do. If you are writing out what's in your head every day, it's then easy to slip into trying out some of the other things that, that she suggests and you don't have to do all of them. I did and they're still benefiting me now. I can't recommend it highly enough but it is one of those things that you're just gonna have to see if it's for you. But I think even having a go at the first week isn't going to take your life backwards or make you unhappy. So that's it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And if anyone reaches this point in the video, why not give me a thumbs up? Just let me know someone reached this point. It would also help me hugely if you subscribe by clicking on my face or the subscribe button or the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Can you please help my daddy get 1,000 subscribers? Just click on his face. Thanks, bye. How was that?